What's up, sassy gamers? That's right. Here we are with Got Our Attention, Season 2, Episode 23, November 18th, 2021. That's right. This is Phoenix Nova at the helm today because Zycia is on assignment. But I do have with me Day Drinker. Hola. Who almost forgot that this is also an audio podcast, apparently. <laughs> 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 She's like waving to the mic. <laughs> Not that mic either. And I got with us Demurin. What up? How are you doing today? I'm just talking about it. I would leave chat and go do whatever he's doing. Yeah, right. seriously. Lena is right? sort of hassling us. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, yeah. uh, we, we just, just ban him. Oh my God. Just ban him. <laughs> Can you ban a moderator? Can no, you oh, can't. You totally can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's but he's not a moderator, is the problem. We can't actually Oh yeah. No, it's show, he's shown up as moderator on Twitch. Yeah. Just say. Well, I could I can try purging him. Oh. Uh, yeah, I I cannot time out a moderator unless you're the owner of the channel. <laughs> you can change the password. Oh no, I mean I could just log in <laughs> as the owner of the channel and I could do it. That's easy enough. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's all Don't right. Don't fight with us. Don't fight with us, Mike. That's it. Uh, it's not even face. a fight. You know, he's he's just going to go do his thing. And like, you think you would like pay attention to the game. You think that he's on assignment for. Yes. Yes. But what what has Mike been playing? <laughs> that wrong game. Wrong type of game. <laughs> More of like what's he's watching. This yeah. has been an interesting week. I, I think we're going to have uh, the, the first half is going to be uh, pretty lengthy and we're, we're going to touch on some topics that are. Uh, mm. Ooh, Nelly uh, stuff that we ooh, normally don't Nelly. I mean, stuff that we like normally and quite purposely avoid talking about on the regular basis. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're going to bring it up today. But, you know, that's the serious stuff. And that's later. And right now, instead, I think I think we need to just start off on the right note. I mean, and the right note is always Kelly's note in Kelly's corner. Thank you, Brian. Great host. I think, uh, you know, if there's a replacement ever needed permanently. It'd be you. No, definitely. No, <laughs> no. I mean, uh, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just the technology behind the stuff. Hey, uh, you're also the brains and the voice. Did you hear no, that, Mike? Like mm-hmm. I've said before. Right. <laughs> so I've got two articles for you um, that I ran across. Um, one of them I heard about from a couple of other people. And uh, I thought it was kind of silly. So there's this family in Peru. And their son came home with this dog that he bought at a uh, pet store. I'll call it a pet store. I don't know for sure. It was, it was definitely a place where you buy animals. Um, and they said it was a puppy dog was really, really great up until like, well, it had a tendency to like chase things. Anybody who's had a puppy or a dog you know, chasing rabbits, squirrels in my area is totally normal. If, you live in a place where lots of people have chickens and ducks. I like if I had a pond, I'm sure my dogs would chase chickens, and ducks. Um, but it started like eating the chickens and ducks too. Um, it was hungry. Yeah, and then about six or six months old, they realized that their pure what they thought was their purebred puppy that they bought for thirteen dollars was actually an Andean fox. And <laughs> they first of all, they, the, the thing that really caught my heart. So about this they, story. OK, so. The, OK, hold on, hold on. There's two red flags here. One. <laughs> purebred for thirteen dollars. Yes, yes. Uh, and, you know, you never. So I, it was the son like he's like a 13 year old kid or something. He's the one who bought the dog thinking it was a purebred. But yes, definitely a red flag. Um, they named the puppy Run Run. Isn't that the cutest? <laughs> that's, that's totally like a kid. We named a dog uh, when I was uh, a 
like probably five or six years old, sniv, because I thought that's how you said sniff, and this dog used to sniff all the time. So we named it Sniv. So I'm sure Run Run got his name or her name from Did that. Did they say what kind of a purebred they thought that he was? The articles that I found, I could not find what they thought he was. Because foxes are like very, very distinct. distinctive. Yeah. But as as a uh, as a even uh, as puppies, like at, at yeah. four months, they've really got their form together. Like dirt. Don't get me wrong, foxes, especially if you know what you're working with, mm-hmm. are amazing. They're not domesticated, <laughs> yeah. but they are amazing. Let's call them house guests. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, they go really can be pet. very nice. Unless you're prepared to suffer a little bit or a lot. Yeah. 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 Well, and they, it's it's more of you become part of their pack rather mm-hmm. than they're a pet. So I did. I had just listened to um, a, a a podcast about foxes and like trying to you know, so domesticate them and type stuff. of fox. Um, trying to domesticate foxes um, and it being an issue because they get to a point where like they seem like they're fine, but then they get to a point where they're just unrestrainable and, you know, but this, this fox specifically, um, there's an organization that is actually trying to track it down and capture it because they think it's an illegally traded fox and in their area, um, lots of, illegally traded animals come from all all around the country um and this organization is trying to like track those so uh, what country was this again uh peru Peru. specifically lima peru yeah the capital okay because i i mean granted my perspective is slightly okay let's say majorly tainted by the fact that of Uh where i live and everything because i i just i just envision my mind Again, let's call it a pet store. There's no shortage of dogs around here. <laughs> no, no pet store is going to have to sell a no. fox. But clearly, clearly different things in Peru. So that, that does make a, a little if, bit more sense. Maybe. If you've got this tiny fox and you're just trying to make a buck and you're like, I don't want to stick around. It's six o'clock. I got to go home and make dinner for my family. Maybe you're like, I'm going to get rid of this thing because I don't care because I'm illegally trading them anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's back to like, why are you doing foxes if dogs are uh, a literally a replenishable resource? But maybe I, maybe dogs are just that much more scarce in Peru or something. Yeah, I or or people specifically are looking for foxes. And this kid was like, oh, that's a kite puppy. And they were like, yeah, it's a purebred. Take it. It's purebred. All right. <laughs> Give me 13 bucks and we'll call it a day. <laughs> It also makes the 13 bucks a little bit more believable. So, yeah, well, and it's $13 US. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So that one I thought was really cute because they named it Run Run. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, my best friend and I were at a, a, a grocery store today, a Korean grocery store to be specific, and they have a massive selection of um seafood lots of seafood that's still alive and for the first time in my life i saw a lot two live king crabs and i was like oh my god this is crazy and like at one point the guy who was behind the seafood counter like was like picking it up and we were like ah! <laughs> like it was so enormous um, so this other article kind of caught my attention. Um, have y'all heard of Christmas Island in Australia? Okay. I have. So okay. Yes. Christmas Island is known for in the autumn having a annual cra- uh crab migration. So these crabs live in their little homes and then migrate to the sea this time every year. To the point where they have to shut down the highways. There are tons and tons and tons of crabs, like walking next to people, hanging out, 
it, it, the, so all of the highways have to be shut down. Highways that can't be shut down, you have to go really, really slow. I, I got I got to say that uh, on the screen because we're displaying yeah. it as well mm-hmm. has got the cutest crab crossing to get yeah. across the highway. It funnels yeah. them together and they climb up this thing and go mm-hmm. across. It's cute? amaze balls. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to get a, a laugh or just a, a little bit of amazement or just have, you know, a couple minutes to kill. Um, check out the Christmas Island crab migration videos. There's a, there are a ton of them. Oh yeah, absolutely out there. There's a ton of them. And t- t- it's just, I, that's how I knew about uh, this Island a little bit was mm-hmm. having seen that before. Yeah. And it's, it's just absolutely crazy. Super crazy. Just having all those crabs running around all at the same time, crawling over those bridges. And there are people like they they don't even care about the people. They're just like walking right next to them, like, hey, what's up, dude? And you're like, hey. <laughs> people were trying to take videos of them and they were like walking over their cell phones and stuff. It was super cute. Very cool. Yeah. Well, that's the fun stuff out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Now let's get to this. Stuff. So we've already talked about it in the past, uh, which is the complete dumpster fire that is mm. Activision Blizzard uh, because Good of their completely it. misogynistic and sexual harassment group of, and this is an insult to the word, <clears throat> leaders that mm. run that company. And one of the things I wanted to bring up right away is we've talked about before where when this first kind of started off, there was this whole thing uh, where their corporate compliance officer who was um, Fran Townsend, who doesn't have a great past as it is. And you can look it up if you want to know about that. There's some things that she's kind of defended that were kind of questionable. Mm -hmm. That she sent out this email to all of the company that didn't read very well. Uh, It said things like, you know, oh, you know, these stories are from like a decade ago and that's not the Activision company of today. And, you know, that's that's some of Blizzard stuff before, you know, the merger. And and there was a couple of things like that. And it was so bad that Activision Blizzard's boss, Bobby Kotick, said, oh, I'm so sorry about this tone deaf communication that went out. (laughs) Yeah. Which was actually funny because this week we found out that Bobby Kotick is the one who wrote it. Which is just so gross and disgusting. Well, I mean, and he it's it's so kind of toxic male that you could almost see him putting his beer down and going. Well, you you want somebody to some somebody who's misogynistic and, and doesn't like women to to write up this email about the sexual harassment in the company. Well, don't send a woman to do a man's job and wrote it himself. <laughs> Right. Uh, Because, I mean, certainly that email makes a little bit more sense of why it was so tone deaf. Mm -hmm. And also like when you're in that position, you're like, I have tried, 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 tried and tried. You're not going to do what I say. Fine. I'll read your email as myself. Like I have been in those situations, so. Well, and it's it's so weird, too, that. Yeah, your company is having problems with this because you're 100 percent willing to write this shitty email and throw your chief compliance officer under the bus. bus. Like. And even making it worse, that's that's a female. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. I want to point out that. Bobby 
has been totally okay with throwing the entire company under the bus for over a decade. So true. Throwing a single employee under the bus is like, I don't know, a thing yeah. that he does before he like fully wakes up in the morning. Like we're talking about a guy who's laid people off in droves, shafted entire departments in like other countries and Europe artist departments, developers like with no notice time yeah. and time again for like the dumbest reasons when the company was making money hand over fist, like the most profitable year as possible. And they're just like, just can another 400 people to help our bottom line look better. And then we can all take home another $15 million payout bonus at the end of the year. This is yeah. not a dude who makes any decisions that are for the greater good of the company Ethical. or, or well, even for like the greater good of the employees. Of yeah. Not, well, that's the thing is it's he doesn't even make decisions for the longevity of the company in a success mm -hmm. way. He makes it like most of his decisions seem very like mid long term, not long term decisions. Like he yeah. he definitely does not care what happens to the company another ten fifteen years from now. He just yeah. wants to ride this company out until he's got enough to retire. So comfortably. jumping ahead to that story, yeah. jumping ahead to that story, uh. Activision Blizzard shareholders were at least a group of them calling for his resignation. And on top of that, finally, fine. No, but shareholders. Oh, the shareholders. OK, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So uh, to which the board of directors came to his defense and said that they still have confidence in him. To which the share, at least this group of shareholders, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily all of them, but this, and we don't even know what percentage they own or anything. But then this group of shareholders said, fine, if you don't get rid of him on the next meeting where there's a voting, we're going to vote in a new board of directors. Wow. And we believe oh, that wow. all the rest of the shareholders should follow us in that. Now, unfortunately, the article doesn't really go into how, again, how much they own or how much power they have. Yeah. But it's interesting. And they're not alone. Twelve, over 1,200 workers so far have signed a petition to get him booted out. So Dude. the employee, like the employees are against him. The shareholders against him. The board's on his side for right now because, which I think is dumb. Actually, yeah. like the 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 share the shares have been tanking, so the board of directors looking stupid by by covering for him and, and following him. I don't know. It's it's a completely silly situation. And that's an awful situation for those employees to be in too, because uh, like I'm sure. On outside looking in, if you a lot of people are like, well, if you're that unhappy, just leave. But where do twelve hundred employees go? That's it's not. Yeah. When, when you that's it, this is a very you know niche job, niche 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 industry, right? You're, like Ex you can't, except you can't just. <clears throat> the thing is, is, is they probably could because. Mm -hmm. um, there's been similar things in the past where a studio suddenly shuts down because a larger studio closed it. And literally it's, it's like there's this community that these other studios and developer houses said, Hey, we understand that you just got let go. We're hiring. And 1200 yeah. employees. Like yeah. True. That many. That the, is a the, lot, lot. And not to mention one of the big problems is just so many of the largest studios now. Mm -hmm are really messed up. Yeah. Like they're all working on themselves because they're just like, they don't completely do in the trash. So like what Ubisoft, are they gonna do? Leave? Well, Riot. Actually, Ubisoft mm -hmm. and Riot are on the up and up, but a lot of these other studios are well, in complete shambles. Like they're, what do you they're mean? working towards the up and up, but I mean, they Riot. had similar Riot's problems been doing pretty good for the last year or so, year and a half. And, and Ubisoft right. has been, Doing mostly great for the well, last. Yeah, Ubisoft hit the news a couple of times recently because yeah, of continued junk. Say. Well, but but the, the thing is, sure. is it they're completely yeah, overshadowed. Certain like, divisions, yeah. They're completely overshadowed by the whole Activision Blizzard stuff. Like, yeah. so even even a even a a company that's screwing up a little bit is not the shit show. 
<laughs> Activision Blizzard is. Yeah, you're talking about like, which is still not a decent thing, but like we're talking about like moderate harassment and guys doing frat house kind of style things like farting on other employees versus people literally go well, to other employees to commit suicide. So yeah. Like, well, yeah. It's, it's, it's like a very it. stark contrast. On top of that, right? So what they did is they're like, oh, we're trying to make the change. We at Blizzard, part of the, you know, part of the larger Activision Blizzard family, we're going to have co-leaders. And one of them is a white male who's like the source of the problems anyway. Not that he's the source of problems. I'm just saying white males are the source of the problems In here, general. right? In general. Um, and we're also going to promote Jennifer O'Neill. And she's going to be co-leader. And it was like, great, because one, she was qualified for the job, which is awesome. And I'm not being surprised that she is. I'm just I'm oh, yeah. surprised that they finally actually promote a female is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. She's qualified for the job and had been qualified for the job. Oh, on top of that, she's female. She's a, she's Asian American and gay. They hit the diversity jackpot mm -hmm. and they treated her like shit. So she stepped like, down and left. So it, it, if somebody's fully qualified, yep. Why do you need a co-leader? Yeah, I'm sorry. Exactly. Why do you? Why does it have to be co? And how can you get anything done when two people, like anybody who's a parent, any parent out there, can tell Talk me right now? Yes, it is tough enough to deal with your kids being a co-leader. You know, so <laughs> co-leading. I yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it, it, that is just that is setting departments up for failure. Nobody like, well, who do I go to? Well, I can go to Jennifer, but she's got to get the OK from this guy, too. And that's like a thing. So or worse, the guy says, you know, Jennifer says no. So they go to the guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mommy you know, said Mom, no. So let me see what dad. daddy says. The way, the way yeah. it was presented was definitely a. Uh, we want there to be almost like like a party system within mm -hmm. the company so that it's not just one person dictating everything like it has been causing so many issues so like if there's two people then if a stupid idea comes from the top both people at the top have to approve the stupid idea and then both people yeah. should always approve the good ideas if they're good ideas and it's harder to have stupid ideas it's working well, really well right. for congress so yeah <laughs> But now, the, some of the this, problems come from the fact that those people don't really have all the power that they try and make it look like they have. No. So. And and she this was a recent thing. This happened in August. It's November. Yeah. It's been two it. months. And it isn't you know, she she said. That even with this, that she was being marginalized, that tokenized and and i think i think that's what really happened is it should have been a two-party thing and instead they put her there because of that diversity jackpot thinking oh we're gonna make so many people happy by doing this yeah. you know that's because the whole time. and and they put her there to to be a token like look at us we're doing so good we've got this person mm -hmm. up here you know and and you know they they fit all these areas and then not really giving her the same amount of money, the 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 same amount of power. Like she she literally says, "I have been tokenized, marginalized, and discriminated against," and that's why she's stepping down after just two <clears throat> months. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something that could be unpopular depending on on how you take it in context. I am so happy that this situation happened because I don't think that if it didn't happen they would get their up and coming, so to speak. If they hadn't yeah. promoted her as a token and made her miserable for the last three months, this would have never happened. It wouldn't come to light how act absolutely horrendously shitty this company has been running mm -hmm. for the last decade. So as messed up as it is, it's actually in a weird way good that she came out into that position and then ended up saying everything she said because there was always a net zero chance of them actually doing what they should have done yeah. and there was there was always going to have to be 
thought they were gonna have to push it to a point where everything collapsed in on itself and everyone was like all right no they're not recoverable they're not redeemable in their current state we do have to destroy them and build them back from the pieces yeah but that was not going to happen for a long long time but now i think she has sufficiently expedited that timeline by coming out and being like yeah it made me like a token woman executive just so that you guys would feel better and then they paid me absolutely nothing for the job and gave me no responsibilities on purpose so i was just a figurehead now now to to be fair uh multiple sources from the company have uh come back to this was an article in kotaku and said that that uh, O'Neill was offered equivalent compensation for the co-lead role. And even the uh, Mike Yabera, who was with her, said, uh, yeah, they were we were offered a new contract. It was the same for both of us across the board. Now. At this point, we literally have he said, she said. My God, this is, it's like never been a situation where it's more literal. Um <laughs> So, you know, we don't know the truth ourselves either way. There has been. There was a movie based on that. But That's maybe. true. <laughs> but there definitely is still a lot of discontent, discontent in that company on a whole. And this definitely shows it. Ah, Jiren, tell us you got some good news. I heard there's a new GTA release out. That's bad news. We're going from from garbage company to garbage release, which sums up this entire next segment. I could practically skip over this and you'd already have all the information you need. But um, so there's a remastered definitive editions of um, the original Grand Theft Autos. Um, and uh, boy, um, they've had a lot of issues from the Rockstar launcher just not doing its thing which is kind of something we run into a lot nowadays is every single company has their own launcher it's like honestly almost an epidemic at this point <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like your computer has an actual sickness and that sickness is you have every launcher known to mankind installed in it ubisoft rockstar steam epic games ea games you name it but anyways, their launcher was plagued by issues stating that it was in maintenance, just general downtime, a lot of usability problems, download issues, the whole nine yards, meaning that a lot of people couldn't even access the content that they paid for um, throughout the release of the games or, or even really just I, I think if some of the articles state like the issues just in general downloading the game. And then after that, where it's accessibility, like once the game was downloaded, you still couldn't play it. It was just like launcher and maintenance couldn't get into it and then finally when people could get into the game <laughs> once they finally were able to start playing grand theft auto <sighs> the game was about what you'd expect from a release nowadays <laughs> from a major company i mean rockstar has been in the business of essentially just selling the same game over and over again for the last like eight years and now they're selling their old games again, which they'll probably do for another few years. And um, the the remakes of it were based off of a mobile version of the games from many, many moons ago, ported into Unity. And um, and as such, they they play exactly how you'd, ex how you'd expect of of a mobile game ported over. So I mean, we uh we have. We have a clip that we can show you to. Yeah, there's there's uh, you there's can go out of this. Yeah, you can you go out on the Internet. Hard. Just put in like GTA remake or remaster definitive edition bugs and, and you'll probably get a thousand of these. Um, one thing before you see this clip, if you do see it uh, on the video. Um, it almost looks like it was made with CD Projekt's directors at the helm, <laughs> right? Uh, cause like, it's fantastic. It's, it's got this, uh, uh, there's an invisible bridge on that one. Uh, and it's just got this car. This guy gets in this car and the door opens and there's still a door there and he gets in the car and then the car emerges well, so, from itself. 
Well, the door opens, and then you notice that there's still a door there, and yeah, the guy like another gets car. in through the door, the and... door, and it's like this car is perpetually there, and every time he gets into it, it spawns another car that slowly. It's like a snake shedding its skin. It's yeah. so weird it's and disgusting it's looking. Creepy. I love it. And it's just like car after car coming out of this Russian doll style until he finally just like blows them up. And like uh, there, there's there's literally just clip after clip of crazy like shit. I, I, I also appreciate amount. I also appreciate they had this weird bug that in the low convertible low rider, they the back doors don't open so your crew can't get in and they actually have an animation of them trying to open the door but the door won't open and they're yanking on it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's just, it, it's like, it's like, did, did you click the button? Did you click the button? Go, go, go. Is it open yet? Is it open yet? But it's a convertible car. <laughs> like they could just yeah. open it up, but they can't because they can't. And there's just <laughs> so many <laughs> physics bugs of the cars uh, of all types, just whoa. going nuts, <laughs> flying across the screen, blowing up, forklifts oh. flying across the screen. I wish the the listeners could see the uh what our the plane just see. crashing. Uh, it it was literally a um uh it looked like a <laughs> using like a, a Chevy Bel Air spinning yeah, it was like, like a frisbee you know, across the screen. Yeah. And there's there's just like all kinds of crazy stuff like you're finishing a mission and the person you're talking to blows up or you finish a mission <laughs> and you immediately get shot after succeeding the mission <laughs> and you lose the mission. And it's just like massive bug after massive bug after massive bug. I laugh as hard as like finishing so, a mission and your friend blows up. Like through all of this, all of these bugs, all these launch issues, the game quite literally being unpurchasable mm -hmm. on their store for yeah. for hours and hours on end to yeah. days. Um the modding community for these games has been pretty intense for a long time. Um, and they're still very intense about what they do. So they're still doing the things that they do, modding the crap out of these games, um, because that's what they're passionate about. And to, to clarify, the, the remakes slash definitive editions aren't necessarily made by Rockstar. They're made by a company, I believe, called Take Two. Mm -hmm. um, Take, Take Two, two decided that the smart idea was to piss off the only people that actually care about these remakes, which is the modding scene, who have worked tirelessly, really, to actually already start implementing fixes for a lot of the things that are broken, as the modding scene does. Bethesda has taken advantage of this for ages, and there's a, there's a serious difference between how Bethesda and even Rockstar have handled modders in the past versus how Take-Two is handling it, in that they never intervene in a direct way. Other than to say, if you make inappropriate mods for our game um, and try and monetize or publicize them, we'll destroy you. Um, which is fair. We'll destroy you. Bethesda has like a <clears throat> reputation to uphold. And in this case, Take-Two decided to DMCA these people, <laughs> like make them take down their stuff and like threaten lawsuits against them um, because they're mods. So they're just taking down these mods online like over and over again. Uh, major like major modding communities are being impacted by it who have done this for ages um and they're not kind of they're, they're really not taking it laying down because these modding communities never do i mean when you're that passionate about something you you generally don't let it go so easily <laughs> so i know some people like that in chat yeah <laughs> they're, they've decided to fire back but they it's kind of like like you have like an older sibling that gets to tell you what to do sometimes and they're trying to tell you what to do and you're just going to go to like your parents. They're they're just skipping over take two and they're like, yo, Rockstar, what's this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> like you let us mod all of your games, but now you're letting this company like sue us and DMCA us for modding your same games that we've modded before, um, which now has just opened this whole can of worms into Rockstar v take two v the modding mm -hmm. community. So yeah. there's this weird triangle of like, like what, who does what? And everyone's hoping that Rockstar airs on the side of the modding community. But it's unclear as of right now exactly how things are going to land, especially since there's so much turbulence revolving these releases. Um, which, I mean, yeah. just seems like the, 
the theme of the month considering how ba- the new Battlefield 2042 or whatever's release is going. Everything <laughs> just seems kind of ridiculous. So I don't know, just a lot going on with not really Rockstar so much as it is Take Two, but Rockstar by proxy because obviously they contracted Take Two to do this, similar to how World of Warcraft's like Blizzard contracted whatever company it was all that time ago to do the new um uh oh my brain forgot the name of warcraft 3 there we go <laughs> so same exact deal kelly yes. the gate the great day drinker the Uh-oh. siren of all things positive please for the love of all that is good take us out of this morass of shit and dumpster fire is there anything positive you have for us I got you, boo. <laughs> okay. One thing I'm really super stoked about is that Xbox announced that they are going to, uh, they announced it on the, uh, on the heels of the 20th, 20 year anniversary of Xbox being released. Um, the Power On, the story of Xbox documentary. It's supposed to get in, it's a six part, part six part documentary. Use your words. <laughs> and um, it's going to be, <laughs> released on december 13th i expected it to be released on like netflix or something but it's gonna be on youtube redbox imdb tv which i actually love and roku uh nice. so check it out there um they're supposed to be getting into the background like the developers uh xbox or they were quoted as saying it's the untold story of the people behind the box glitches in all. So I, uh, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. There was a, what was it? What was the Xbox documentary or not the Xbox documentary, the video game documentary on, um, uh, Netflix power up. This is, this is power. Was it? I can't. God, I, would, oh, I should have prepared. Uh, there's that high way. score. High score. That's it. So if it's anything like high score, it'll be really, really cool. That was that was all Nintendo based. Um, so this will be uh, this will be very interesting. I mean, I'm excited for it. The mm. Xbox was the first console I bought for myself. And really the first console I had had and played since the since the atari 5200 Mm -hmm. so i mean there was quite a gap for me i skipped over all the nes stuff Uh, i appreciate the nes now Um, yeah my my first xbox was actually the xbox one x that i wanted like a company party thing and honestly it was weird because i already had the ps4 pro i had bought the Mm -hmm. ps4 pro six months earlier and then after i got the xbox one x i legitimately bought every single player title on it because it just played so much better. I will say though, I I've always hated the Xbox UI. Really? Oh, oh really you know weird, what? Because I'm a big Microsoft UI fan when it comes to like I, operating systems, but I could not stand uh, the UI the, on the, the Xbox. The 360 Blades mm-hmm. was like the pinnacle of the UIs for all the consoles, especially the yeah. modern consoles where you needed a UI of that level. Um. But the uh, the problem is, is that UI wasn't scalable for the next generation where you know, it was a lot more video heavy, a lot more like when you don't just want to see the names of the games. You want to see like the picture full screen with the name and like other stuff in it, you know, like the, truly the multimedia is what killed it. Mm. And that's what slowed all of them down. PlayStation included uh, PlayStation UIs when you started getting too many games on it was so low and and it's just a shame that uh, that was. But I am looking forward to this documentary. I think it's going to be super excited. Uh, We're trying to ignore um, uh, Zycia that's talking about Xbox controller. I mean, I had no problem. I don't know what you're talking about. I had no problem with the original Xbox controller at all. I mean, like even these modern ones are just like they're too small. I mean, come on. Oh, they're too small. (laughs) 
my teeny tiny hands can't take anything bigger. Take that how you will, community. <laughs> yes. Well, I got I got the giant meaty pot. I to be fair, um, uh, my my significant other, uh, my partner, also has small hands, and they did quite well on the original Duke, the original Xbox controller. I okay. know. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, because I mean, that's, they had to, you know, didn't have a choice. That was what the controller was until the Xbox small controller came out, which was originally the Japanese controller, um, which will probably, they'll probably touch upon in, in this, uh, whole documentary. But until then they had to deal with the larger controller and, and did fine. Yeah. And then chat saying also that the original Xbox controller was the best uh i you know i liked it because they had the two extra buttons by the other four and Mm. and they actually had game functions not now where they're just menu stuff Mm um yeah yeah there's definitely don't mind the one that came with the xbox one x um but no controller has ever impressed me as much as the new PlayStation five controller. Yeah, well, I guess it's I'm okay. Come to your house and play that because By all means. Get PlayStation. I mean, I can just grab mine right here. Mm. I love the way that controller feels. It's great. And unfortunately for this, for the, for the next story, I, I would have been able to grab uh, what we were talking about, but uh, I brought it, took it back downstairs after I installed it. Cause. Well, oh, oh, so uh, Xbox has made a ton of, we already knew that Xbox had made a ton of backward compatible games. Um, Xbox 360, Xbox one, but yeah, I was just stopping the eye, dude. Um, <laughs> but uh, they made 76 more backward compatible games um, on the heels of the anniversary gate two, which was like apparently one of the most requested 76, huh? 76 Fallout 76. They purchased Bethesda Fallout 76 expansion confirmed problem solved. That's right. Oh, We've arrived. <laughs> Follow the money sheeple. <laughs> um, some of these uh, improvements are just going to be like resolution, uh, auto HDR, FPS, boot, FPS boost, sorry, wine. Um, but, uh, you know, others are going to be even cooler. Um, let's see. The FPS I, boost. I, I can say I've played Crimson Skies back when it was made backwards compatible, and that was yeah. uh, back on the Xbox One. And it was crazy because they, they couldn't change the framework. Right. Mm. But uh, what they were able to do is they were able to go back to the original textures and they were able to load higher res textures that went over the same pol- polygonal framework. And it looked really good. And I was very, very depressed because back then they said, oh, we're done. We're no longer doing backwards compatibility for the original Xbox. No more original Xbox stuff. And I was like, but, but time splitters, you you have like, I, I was still buying original. I was going on eBay and buying original Xboxes to play time splitters with my friends. Yeah. And sure enough, two of the games is time splitters two and time splitters future perfect which they have now released. And if you don't have the discs, you just buy them digitally. It's like 10 bucks. That's the best part is you can just buy it digitally. Just buy That's these the things if you want to. Part. And I boot it up and even it, and it, it, it's not a great game. It's just crazy fun to play. Oh, really? Okay, split screen multiplayer. It's split screen multiplayer with it is super fun. But it was... Even it had some improvements where you could tell that they up the textures a little bit. It still isn't great looking. It's not going to win any awards or anything. But I mean, yeah, they, some, uh, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand is a yeah. dumb game that you should play. But 
<laughs> I was literally about to say that. So the one reason, if, if you're looking for a game like me, okay, so there's one game that I hold near and dear to my heart that my brother introduced me to called Naughty Bear. And anytime I see like a new list of things, I'm like, oh my God, is it on there? Is it going to be? No. So it, and so one of the reasons they cited was uh, that they, they can't backward make everything backwards compatible because of a lot of the time copyright and licensing issues. So yeah. and other legal issues. So I still have a little hold out for, yeah. um, I, you know, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, they, they said know, that's now. it for I'll now, but again. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, they were serious. Well, so they were like, no, we're not effing around. Like, we are serious. Yes, Work. to the person who messaged me. That was you. Put our um, foot down. Yeah, putting our foot down. No more. This is literally the end of the list. We, the, due to many reasons outside of our control, we cannot make anything else backwards. Without. Sometimes they, sometimes they just can't find who the license holders are. Mm -hmm. It's it's as yeah. bizarre as that sounds. I this... ran into that in the corporate world, and I was like, "How on earth is this possible?" And they're like. It's really common. Ex guy. Yeah, it's it's super common, especially before a lot of stuff was stored digitally as much as it is now. But companies go out of business and they get mm -hmm. parceled out and different people buy stuff. And, and some of these companies buy things and they they're buying a package deal. And they're like, I really wanted to buy blah. Uh -huh. And they got in the package deal 15 other things that they didn't give a shit about. And they don't even know they own in many cases. And the, the, I mean, you, you look at um, Nordic Nordic, which had bought, um, was it? It's not TRC. It's um, THQ. THQ. Thank you. Nordic started buying up. THQ went out of business. And Nordic started buying up a bunch of the THQ stuff. And that's how a lot of the stuff started to live again. And, but they didn't buy all of it. Some of it got sold to other people. Some of it got sold to other people and then later got sold to Nordic THQ. And yeah, time splitters was one of the ones that was lost in licensing hell for a while until. Not to mention a lot of these games, like they don't even know where the original code is anymore. Oh yeah. Which means that they don't have yeah. enough to pour it. They're like, well, we're like, how do we, how do we backwards compatible? Like we can't, like, it's just like we don't we don't know what we're working with half the time. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's played this game, downloaded it or has a disc of it anywhere in existence. Like it's just gone. I mean, that happened to Icewind Dale. Uh, it was it was Icewind Dale or Icewind Dale 2. That the company no longer had the source code to it. And so they wanted to re-release it. They re-released everything else around it. But they couldn't release that one game again because they're like, well, Lost the source code. Can't do anything with it. Yeah. Dude, Very that's crazy. Happened. Yeah. Um, oh, God. It is damn crazy. There's another one that I like to play called Dark Castle that I played on my mom's Mac in like 1985, like maybe 1987. Um, but it, like it was a disc game and it, you literally plugged it in, put popped it in floppy disk. Like, and I remember walking into, it was like, you walk into this castle and you have to like throw these stones and kill these bats. Anybody else who remembers dark castle, please help me out. But you have to like throw these stones and you can't go too far and you go, whoa, whoa. If anybody remembers that game and knows how to get it on some computer, please <laughs> help me out. Bring it to me. <laughs> Sorry. To uh, that well, on that note, we're going to yeah. go ahead and take a commercial break and we'll see you here in just a moment. You can turn on. Dark Castle. And we're back. Uh -oh. Sicia style. <laughs> now no, we're back and you forget the intro yeah well well he always tries to like deepen his voice he's already got a deep voice as it is he's like he's got that silky smooth voice uh it's it's the only reason why we keep him around really i mean come on yeah uh 
I mean, at this point, for sure. So did you getting, hear that, Mike? <laughs> no. Getting right into what we've been playing. on me that I didn't play the news music for the news <laughs> but anyway now uh what we've been playing this week game of the moment was presented by Zeisia, who is not here today and it's just interesting that he played dicey dungeons something that is i did on my personal youtube channel a long time ago it, it's been a favorite game of mine for a long time um my partner loves that game as well. Uh, we found it in one of the mini convention runs that we did and, and purchased it right away. It is this fun little dice game. Uh, some kind of flavors of Yahtzee where you have different powers that are represented on these cards that you activate the powers with dice. And each card has its own rules, whether has to be an odd dice number, or perhaps you have to have doubles, or perhaps that you can have only up to three. Or maybe you have to have over three and over. So they have these different rules. And more interestingly is that the story is that you go to this game show. And, the, and if you win the game show, you get anything you want. Trouble is, is that they turn you into a die. And you play the game so that you don't die. I will <laughs> credit Zycia with that horrible dad joke, because that was his joke. And well, since he's not here, you shouldn't have credited him. But. Yeah, I, you know, I give credit where credit's due, especially bad jokes. No, <laughs> uh, it's it's the writing in it is actually fun, considering that you don't see a lot of writing, but the writing in it is really fun. The characters in it are amazing. The wizard that his socks float off and then go back on uh, the cactus that looks so sad and, and is sweating. It was, was it sweating um, or crying like it, it, it was sweating, I think. Well, what was crying? Was it like a turtle or something? No, it was it something. Was the, cactus. Yeah. the cactus was crying. The cactus oh, was maybe it was crying. crying. I thought yeah. it was sweaty, but yeah, because I was like, oh, he's he should conserve that water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Chad said crying because he did he no hugs. He doesn't no get any hugs. Yeah. Don't know yeah. why. But. You have to crawl through this dungeon, you get to decide which way you go, but it's connected in such a way that you can skip over things like health, but you can't skip over things like enemies. You have to make decisions which enemy do you attack first. Uh, it's usually best. Uh, the one of the kind of things about the level design that isn't good is that in reality, you should defeat everybody on a level because that's how you're going to level up and heal up for the next level. Um, and if you don't attack everybody and you go to the next level, you're on a losing mission at that point. And you eventually get to a boss. Each character that you play, starting from the basic warrior, going through a thief, going through the inventor, the robot, there's a witch. Uh, each one of them has different mechanics. Uh, the warrior's pretty straightforward. The thief uh, tends to, each time he goes into battle with somebody, he steals one of their cards. He's able to use one of the other person's cards. They can still use their own card too, but at least he has the ability to use it. The inventor takes cards and converts them into something else that are kind of free to use. Uh, the, 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 I guess the witch is great because she like is able to combine things in potion type style and cast these spells. They're just really amazing. And when you get to the final boss each time, uh, that you do it, uh, it helps unlock doors, which unlock different difficulties with different modifiers. The boss always has interesting mechanics. And they're they're very difficult. You have to level up before you get to the boss. And on top of all that, you have like this inventory system. You can only carry so many of these cards because of their size. Some of them are double the size of others. And 
you collect more as you come along. So you can have them in your backpack. You can swap out the ones that you want. If you need a whole bunch of healing, you put in a healing one. You can trade them. Uh, you can buy other ones and you can upgrade them. So you can upgrade them to either make them more effective or sometimes the effectiveness stays the same, but you decrease their size so you can fit more cards on essentially your active inventory. And as you increase your level, you're able to throw more die. And you also are able to hit this focus, which does different things for the different characters that basically give you more die to work with each time. And I'm not doing it any justice at all talking about it. It's it's such a difficult game to discuss. But such a fun game to play and so cute. Even when the characters are not meant to be cute looking like that almost rabid fox. They're still. Yeah, just yeah. So cute. The characters were absolutely adorable like super 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 cute the graphics i uh, just it, i mean obviously very simple but um fun you know in anthrop anthropomorphizing to the max like with like we said like the cactus crying which i guess isn't anthrop anthropomorphizing because cacti technically aren't animals but well giving uh, human yeah, features to yeah. different <laughs> thing yeah, yeah close enough yeah, it's a great laptop. It's a great travel laptop game. Uh, I actually don't know if it they do have a mobile version or not. I should look that up, but it's great laptop game because it's it's simple enough graphics and everything that, you know, you can I mean, you're not going to put it on your work laptop because we don't do stuff like that to our work dot work laptops now, do we? But because you're uh, going to lose it in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, the point is, is, like, it is on Nintendo Switch, so there is a portable version of it as well. I highly, if you do not have it, it's 15 I, bucks. It costs less yeah. than to go see a movie, pretty much. And it's just so worth it. You should go and spend the money and play with it. And it's just got, it's it's got hours and hours and hours of gameplay, but it's also the type of game that you can pick up Go in as one of the characters, spend 15 or 20 minutes playing it, and then walk away and go go do a chore or something. And it's fine. And you just you yes. had fun. You lifted yourself up for that 15 minutes. Yeah. Like, like you don't have to press pause. You can just like do what you gotta do and like come back to it. That's that is the the I'm trying to see if it's uh on Apple. No, it's not it's not on Apple. It's not uh, on okay. It's not on Android. It's a uh, switch is about as mobile as it gets. Yeah. But changing from the uplifting game to the propelling you forward at great velocities. I know you've been waiting for this day drinker. Why don't I you have, tell us a little bit about this? So we we saw. Uh, the preview at E3 and a lot of discussion around it, and I love race drive race car driving games like racing games any anything with a car and i think it stems from when i was like a little kid being in an arcade and wanting so desperately to be able to drive a car and i couldn't so like this is the best i could do right so i stuck at these games i i am so bad at these games but i freaking love these games so much and this one does not disappoint it <laughs> it does not disappoint in my awfulness either. Um, it's a beautiful game. So um, it's the Horizon Festival, obviously, or it's a Horizon 5, um, set in Mexico, which is a beautiful country, and you get to see all of the country. So um, lots of people don't know their jungles in Mexico. People have a stereotype of what Mexico is, Mexico is an amazing city, an amazing state, amazing Are country. Are you telling me Mexico isn't just sand and uh, cacti? I've been drinking too. Um, it's all of those things. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's it's not just sand and cacti. Um, so <laughs> it's it, it 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 touches on the history. Um, it touches on the different terrain. Obviously, there are really cool cars you can drive. 
uh, the intro itself is you coming out of a it's like C-130, like with a parachute on your car, floating down into whatever race you're going to be hitting. And then you're off and you, you're in the train and they're like, come on, let's go and making cracking jokes and stuff like that. It is a freaking blast. I had I've been having an amazing time playing this. This is probably one of the, the few games I've played more recently than anything else. <clears throat> and one one of the things about this and very much in the vein of the former Horizon games, mm -hmm. but the one piece of advice I can give anyone on this is just go with the flow. Just just go. Don't worry about like perfecting everything. Don't worry about redoing stuff. Just go with the flow because you just get car after car after car and lots mm. of credits to buy other cars and lots of stuff to upgrade and tune your cars and. And just event after event where you can just do bat shit, insane, crazy stuff with these cars that yeah. you couldn't do in real life, hitting danger signs. I hit a danger sign with uh, a Lamborghini, uh, I think Huracan, and hit just hit this ramp that was right above a cliff and flew, flew this car for 1,700 feet. And it was the <laughs> it was my personal best, landed it right in the river. And, and it did say, oh, well, we're not going to count this because that isn't the car that we wanted to use for this season of this competition. And I'm like, I don't care. How often do you get a jump a Lamborghini and and not and go that far and not die? I mean, you can't do none of this stuff you can do in real life. Just blasting through fences. What? Sure you can. There'd be no issue jumping a Lamborghini. 1700 free with how much that car costs the safety features will obviously protect you and you will come out totally unscathed <laughs> easy. i want to live in your fantasy world easy <laughs> i've been in multiple car accidents and i'm still alive and it shows <laughs> mr concussion <laughs> not twitchy no no i like yeah i, I agree like the 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 jumping these trucks off of giant hills and landing on other cars and it glitches out every now and then fun but uh in yeah like it, it, so the one thing i do want to say is um <clears throat> so i played it on first of all it takes for damn ever to download um on my xbox and on my on my Xbox, it took for damn ever to download. And I for that that quantifies as like two hours. And I've got really great Which internet. I don't know what was that. happening. I don't know what was going on. Like everything else is downloaded much more quickly. Um, Renner Diva said that he she had a, a lot of issues downloading on her PC. And I yeah. know that her internet is just as good as mine. So, um, but one major issue that I had that I think Renner Diva had and somebody else had was, um, the game would start and then crash on your PC and specific to game pass, I believe. Right? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. You are absolutely right. Specific to game pass. So, so if you were playing it on game pass and loaded it through game pass, it, you were having major issues and I got so frustrated at one point. Like I played the intro multiple times just to get through it and finally figured out, Oh, all I have to do is run it at as, as administrator. I'm sure that's something that's going to be fixed, but, um, apparently there was an update today. So yeah. maybe I'll run fix. Uh, maybe not. I never had that issue. Through game yeah. pass on your PC. Game really? Uh, Rudder Diva did not either. Really? Okay. Well, that was it's weird, weird and then. but I did have that issue. Okay. Um, I I tell you too that it it's it's fun because if you get tired doing one thing, something else is right there around the corner. Yeah. If you're unhappy yeah. about how you started this race, 
you don't it, it isn't like you have to end it and drive all the way back like the old days. You just you mm-hmm. just tell it to restart the race. Rewind. Even when or you're done with the rewind. race. Rewind. Re- or, just well, rewind. And you yeah, don't get penalized for the rewind. Also, like, there's... Re- <clears throat> rewind is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, actually, you do get a, you get a slight penalty, but it's it's not okay. something that none of us. It's care not like about. it was before. Yeah, yeah, it's not like what we care about. But rewind is hilarious because they offer rewind in the live multiplayer. Yes. <laughs> so you can rewind and fix the fact that you missed a checkpoint flag because you got to go in between those flags or go over the flag, right? Yeah, you can literally drive over the flag, but as long but as if you, you go outside as as the flag of it, moved. If you go outside of it, you've got to go through that checkpoint. Well, yeah. if you're in a live game, you can rewind. But of course, it's a live multiplayer mm-hmm. game. So it only rewinds you. Everybody else is. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, rewind back and you go through the checkpoint. And all of a sudden, you've gone from second place to 17th place. And it's yeah. it's hysterical doing it. Like, <laughs> I, I would never have thought of rewinding in a live multiplayer but it did it. They should they should make it so that there's like a special event weekend where you can rewind other people in your game. Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> like like you have Why? you have to like earn points oh to be able God, to rewind that would someone. Be amazing. <laughs> so like Forza Horizon meets Mario Kart. That yes. that voice chat. Everybody, everybody would like voice rewind double X thirty nine sixty nine. Women no. are hot. Double X. Better yet. <laughs> Everybody rewind that whenever asshole. People say on voice chat gets recorded and that also gets played back in reverse whenever somebody rewinds. Everything is rewound. Yes, that, that'd be nice. Yeah. But like I played it and, and I had a decent amount of fun. I can tell you one thing. I'm not a big racing game fan. So mm-hmm. if I had run into an issue where the tutorial crashed on me multiple times, I would have uninstalled that. Out. Yeah, I know, I know. Not I, at my speed. I, it, this is like, I mean, if it had been any other game, I would have been like, we're done. Well, and mm-hmm. honestly, that's yeah. the but only issue I, I've run into. Yeah, I was really looking. For well, the game was ooh, the game hold is on. Beautiful, yeah. so. Let me take that back. That's not the only issue we ran into. Yeah. So one of the things that I was excited about this and we still got to test this because I, I, I think I. Did you sit? <sighs> I, I think I found what the solution was online. But one of the exciting things that I wanted to do with Forza Horizon, because this insanity that you can do with the cars is fine. Mm -hmm. But after a while, it's just the same insanity that you're doing over and over again. And that's not nearly the same as sharing that insanity with your friends and watching that crazy shit they get into. And we won. Online multiplayer is not unlocked right away. Yep, which is two bullshit. I'm going to say right now, bullshit. It's total bullshit. I mean, I kind of get it that they're trying to teach you some of the mechanics of the game, but hell, it's an arcade racer. I press the button to go fast. I press the other button to it's e-brake and the other one. Five. <laughs> I know. I, yeah, I get it, it but I, I kind of understand you, you got to onboard new people. Yeah. It was actually my but, first board the game. Exactly. Really? You got to onboard new it people. It was not my it was my first Horizon game. It was not my first Forza game. Oh, the last God. racing game I Welcome to Horizon Festival. Was yeah. Burnout Paradise City. Yeah. That's and the, and game. there are some parallels there. But the interesting thing though is they not only do they have it locked, they don't tell you how to unlock it. It is an adventure game. The Mm. Internet hasn't even figured it out yet. If you Google. The Internet on how to unlock online multiplayer on Forza 5, you will get 15 different answers. And I don't I don't think any of them are correct because, you know, just because this guy didn't unlock until he did these things. I unlocked it way before that. Um, Now, if that wasn't bad enough, when we did unlock it, we got to the point where it didn't seem to see everybody in the party. And I could see some people like I was able to see Zeisia and he was a solid car. I could bump into him and I'm like, yeah, he's here, but we could never see day drinker. David drinker could never see us. Now we're still going to test it though. 
Uh, because well, while it, Demirin does think that all games are shit, we're going to test it again because apparently even if you're having those problems, if the leader of the party goes and starts an event, it apparently syncs everything up and you're OK. Sorry, Dave Drinker, you were saying yeah. something. So we're definitely going to test that. But one cute thing about the game is that um, you're. If you're friends with anybody on Xbox. While you're driving around, it'll say, oh, you know, Goomba Turkey's driving past you and um, Uncle Remus 33 is doing this. And I should probably not have said those things, but whatever. So you're driving, driving, driving. And you're like, oh, there's so and so. But they're not actually legit in the game with you. But it's and like, sometimes oh, they are, which is the weird thing. Sometimes they are. But most of the time they're not. So like I was telling um, somebody, I was like, I know it wasn't you, but like you were so in my way. <laughs> like, I was I wanted you to get the fuck out of the way. And it, but so anyway, it's it. That's a cute little. Additive to the game that I, I enjoy because you're like, oh, you feel like you're playing with people, even though you're like, I know that this person is literally. I dead swear right every race that I've done on that game. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, Bando is <laughs> literally on my ass every single game. Just this ghost car. That... And for some reason, they've always got the weirdest detailing on them. I don't know if like it oh my God. car details that he has on cars. Is, oh, God, Bando in chat tonight? No, like, I want to ask him about this. And mud button stuff show up in all my races. I mean... And their cars always look stupid as hell. Just I'm, like they should, just like you would expect, right? I'm willing to put money down that it's not actually Oh God Bando, that it's a no, family it's member. not. Yeah, but oh no, but, no, 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 I know that he's been playing it for sure. I know for a fact that he's been playing it. I think other people have been playing it too, probably. Well, anyway, let's I've been move. getting some, I can admit, getting some hate too, and I'm like, no, you're totally right. I I guess really one game oh, I, uh, yeah. I have played this week was um, yesterday. I played briefly a little bit of uh, the new Halo Infinite multiplayer. Okay. Which um, is available last, free. Yes. Yep, the last Halo game I played was Evolved multiplayer. Whoa. Many <laughs> moons ago in computer labs at school. <laughs> with That's a bunch like of other a people many many moons ago i skipped all the other i've never i literally like i played <laughs> halo evolved and then i played not a single another halo until halo infinite and <laughs> i know <laughs> that's that's a hell of a jump because oh, wow. like they play completely different now mm -hmm. the banshee is still a banshee i guess or the yeah. warthog, sure. warthog and the guns they i mean a lot of those are still the same they just a lot of technology in between those two games. I had fun <laughs> with it, but like first person shooters and racing games are definitely not my jam. And I've played both of them in the last two weeks. Um, so now look at uh, you. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was all right. It's all right. I think the, 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 the system in it, like the, um, the battle pass system seems a little like a little ridiculous. Like the amount of experience you gain is absolutely garbage, like total trash. But Which apparently they're fixing. They are working on it, though. I saw the changes they were making were like some real, real slight. I'm like, uh, we're just going to nudge it up just a little bit for you. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I, I had heard some things about it, too, that it's that some of the experience is specific to certain things that you do that not everybody are interested in doing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be. Like, well, whatever. Anyway. Well, anyway, let's move on to our short news. Starting off uh, as if there were not enough brawler games out there, uh, Brawlhalla and Smash being two of the most well-known, but not the only ones and not the only popular ones. Warner Brothers wants to hone in on this and try their own hand at this because they've got intellectual property. And what are you going to do if you have a whole bunch of intellectual property, but you're going to mash it all together in a brawler game? 
So they're coming out with multiverses. Uh, oh, they uh... they have, of course. Uh, well, maybe not, of course, maybe you don't know what. Uh, what intellectual property they have, but they have the DC universe. So they have Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, Harley Quinn, you know, uh, who are going to be battling people like Shaggy <laughs> from Scooby-Doo. Uh, how about Bugs Harley Bunny Quinn and Shaggy? <laughs> yeah. Harley Quinn and Shaggy. Oh God. Like Shaggy is in trouble. Uh, but Bugs Bunny is also going to be there. Uh, uh, Arya Stark. From they're they're throwing Game of Thrones in there. Hey, I'm all about that. I'm all about that. Why why are y'all sleeping on Shaggy? You think Shaggy's <laughs> gonna taken out by Harley Quinn? That dude's right. taken out so many bad guys. Are you kidding me? Bad guys. He I has mean, a soft spot for the ladies, though. Is the problem he gets he's confused? Gonna be just fine. <laughs> he's, he's gonna good. rip off her head and be like, she was. Nope. A corpse all no. along. He's he'll gonna offer her a of blunt. Something and yeah, he'll slip and like she'll like, like, head through a nail or some bullshit and be like, "My bad." I yeah. Even uh, so, Steven Universe, which I am not familiar with, um, uh, Garnett also from the Steven Universe universe, Tom and Jerry. That's now, strange. they're not clear if there's two characters coming in, both Tom and Jerry, or if this is going to be like a Nintendo Ice Climbers thing where you have like these two characters that form one fighter uh, with okay. Tom and Jerry. Who Let knows? Let me ask you this one. Pepe Le Pew, is he still canceled? <sighs> I mean, he I, is, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm he is, he's unfortunately. Still, he is. I'm just mm-hmm. curious. I mean, might be nice to fight him. He's he's might a be bit nice of a to fight stalker. Him yeah. Yeah. He's a bit of a stalker, so it'd like, be nice totally if he was a non playable character that you could beat on. That'd be fun. There you go. Uh, no, I like, I got a soft spot for that little man. He's just a misunderstood French man that really likes women, he, <laughs> but he just needs to tone it down a bit, like a lot a bit. I like a, a lot, lot, a lot of bit. He needs, he needs a couple glasses. It's he really needs, funny. Yes. I heard about the W multiverse thing in a weird way, and the reason why Shaggy will win is because. Um, if if this is true, and I believe that it is, Shaggy's move set is based on an internet meme about Shaggy versus Goku, where Shaggy can go Super Saiyan, and Shaggy in the game is going to have Super Saiyan mode, which means he's practically a god. <laughs> I mean, so I'm you can't going to argue play against that. Shaggy. Yeah, so Shaggy is going to be able to go Super Saiyan, and I don't see how what? Harley Quinn can stand a chance against that. I mean, I can't wait to see Shaggy Super Saiyan versus like Superman or something. Let's do it. Oh, my God. We're going to be reporting on this story in three months. Mark, what if Scooby Doo can go Super Saiyan? I mean, you give give him a Scooby Scooby snack. snack. Yeah, I was going to say you give him a Scooby snack. He's already there. Uh, So this is going to be on the uh, consoles both uh, current and previous generation, also PC via Steam. Uh, there's going to be dedicated server-based rollback netcode. So they're serious about the fighting game netcode here. That's actually pretty cool news. Um, I know a minuscule amount about rollback and netcode and know that that's a cool thing. Um, so yeah, look for that. They don't have a release date quite yet. Uh, it's a little early. They've just done the announcement basically. Uh, but like anything else, uh, even if they gave us a release date, we know that's going to be pushed back and look for this. And, uh, my guess is quarter three or quarter four, 2022. Hmm. That's, that's wishful thinking. Uh, um, I know. <clears throat> uh, our next story join Shaggy with that blunt is going to be, uh, is actually about new world again. So we're going back to that. Um, obviously I'm a fan of New World. I've had a lot of fun with it, uh, you know, against what I expected from it, which I expected to just be garbage. However, it has been plagued by issues, a lot of them, um, which they've been working to resolve. And they announced this last week, an update that is coming. And I can't, I'm not even going to get into everything that's in the update, because this is supposed to be a free update that comes out in the next month or so. Um, But the update does include five new dungeons, an entire new portion of the world, like a whole new map. Um, 
seven new weapons, which is essentially seven new classes, um, a dungeon mutation system um, for dungeon difficulties, um, like thousands of new crafted items, furnishing items, things like that. Just a complete overhaul to a lot of the things in the game. And the biggest ask of the entire community, a dungeon finder is being added to the game in this expansion which is wild the game has not been out for a long time it's like just reaching two months of age or just did so we're talking two months in and there's an expansion that is like bigger than most world of warcraft expansions are when they first land um which is fairly impressive they're also adding things like spectator modes for wars and invasions so people can watch these things live um just a lot of things coming through for it but at the same time that they announced this it wouldn't be Amazon's game release without some negative aspect to their positive aspect. Um, <laughs> New World's economy, which has been shut down on multiple occasions. And when I say that, I don't mean like a bunch of people exploited something and messed with it a little bit. I mean, like they actually disabled the ability for any kind of currency or items to be transferred from one person to another. So you are effectively playing a multiplayer game completely solo because you cannot transact with anyone. Everyone's locked down. Because yet again, for like the third time, a major game-breaking duplication exploit exists, which allowed people to essentially just infinitely duplicate trophies, which are super expensive items that you put in your house to give yourself permanent character buffs, no matter where you are in the world, infinitely. So um, they wow. disable trading again and again. Um, which is something that really pisses people off because when you disable trading, people can't do things like pay their taxes, their property taxes on their house. They can't pay their city taxes. They can't pay their upkeep costs. They can't do any of these things, which causes just a lot of problems, like your city getting downgraded from a city to a village or a village to a town, which causes a bunch of other implications. So every time that happens to me, I hate it. I can't, I can't. <laughs> tell you how many times <laughs> all the time right all the time it's it's really wild the, the <laughs> game has had some of the most interesting exploit issues i've seen of any mmorpg um and their um their pushback is essentially like we're, we're just going to start completely permabanding exploiters for like ever like <laughs> we don't care anymore <laughs> like what's done is done um which has been happening there's a lot of posts from people since the last exploit that are like I got banned, but I never did anything wrong. And we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure, yeah, right? sure. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's innocent when they get banned yeah, every single time. But yeah, so that's this week's news in New World is a lot of new content coming, but the same old exploit bug, which I'm just assuming that when the expansion hits, the economy is going to shut down again. <laughs> it's like the real life simulator. <laughs> Fair Every enough. time something big happens, the economy comes to a grinding halt. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so there's a dude, which I was uh, informed today. It's, it's not uncommon for what's going to happen at the end of my story to happen. But there's a dude in the UK, <clears throat> and he was born after the NES system was ever created. Uh, but he has dyslexia and was given an NES or his parents bought an NES in like the early 90s. He played it, loved it. But due to his dyslexia, like anybody who knows anybody with dyslexia, it's difficult to read certain texts. Um, and in anything above an 8-bit system, it can get much more difficult to read those texts. Also, in anything like all the games that we play right now, I can't typically I can't pause a game and like read what's happening on the screen. Um, but he loves the NES and he created a game called Flea, uh, which you can check out. But he didn't just create the game to be played, like you can play it on your PC. He's actually done some crowdsourcing and uh, um a uh, GoFundMe so that he can create actual consoles. The console, I'm sorry, not the actual consoles, the actual cartridges. So 
you can actually buy these cartridges and play his video game, which I thought was really, really cool. So, um, <laughs> by the way, Zeiss, yeah, I think I need it under 60 seconds for once. There You're you welcome. go. I'm not even fucking here. Mine's pretty quick. Uh, it's no, no secret that Streamlabs, which creates uh, what they call slobs, Streamlabs OBS, uh, is frequently Blobs confused. crashed again. I had to here all the time. <laughs> I was frequently like, oh confused my God, with thinking? frequently confused with OBS. OBS is the open broadcasting uh, system, and it uh, makes it easy. To, we use OBS, for instance, to do what we're doing right now. Okay. And uh, because Streamlabs uh, OBS is open source, so Streamlabs used the open source and forked it off and created their own version. And because of the way they name it, there's a lot of confusion. So much so that gamers and even companies flood the OBS help forums complain about problems that they have with Streamlabs. It's not the same company. Uh, OBS finally had enough and just Twitter bombed them and just said, Hey, you know, we reached out near the launch, kindly asked for them not to use that OBS in their name. They went ahead and did it anyway. Also, by the way, it's kind of funny how their website looks suspiciously identical to our website. And they just kind of oh, nailed them on a couple of things, which at first Streamlabs kind of ignored. And then people started really just jumping in on this and telling Streamlabs that they need to essentially man up. Uh, and it even got so much that Pokimane, who is literally one of the faces of Streamlabs, and you know for a fact that she is getting some type of compensation from them. Her face is on the front page about one of the big streamers that uses it. And she flat out said, you need to change your name and among other people saying that. Um, and so they finally caved. Mm. Uh, apparently, even Edward Snowden said that they needed to change their name. When Edward Snowden is giving you advice. I, I mean, it's either one way or the other. And yeah. And I mean, technically, everything they did did is within the GPL agreement. Mm. but. The whole idea but. of open source is that you give back to the community as well. So mm. they're at least going to remove the OBS from their name. Awesome. And now on to positive news again to stay away from negative stuff for a little bit. Um, we're <laughs> going back to uh, a game that wronged me and a company that wronged me even farther. Uh, oh. soul crushing soul we're talking about power. Outriders the game that took 100 plus hours of my time and deleted every last second of it with absolutely no remorse Outriders, I thought you said this was going to be positive oh it's getting positive don't worry um, Outriders obviously when it released was plagued with issues only rivaled by that of new world economy problems um <laughs> And the fact that they deleted a large percentage of their player base's characters um, eventually restored the characters, but not all their gear. It was a really bad launch overall. They had a lot of problems. Bruno was walking um, around naked for a long time. It was, it was pretty rough. Um, I mean, I was happy about that. <laughs> I it was Only so when bad. he was screaming. It was so bad that when I refunded the game, Steam let me keep the game, but gave me back the money. So oh, wow, that's how bad it was. They allowed mm -hmm. for their most impacted players to just be like, "Ah, that's fine, we're cool." Um, well, they're <laughs> in the news now because they're finally releasing a legitimately decent-sized update for their game. So they've revealed New Horizon as an update, and it is the final update, as they call it, of this chapter of the game. It releases four new endgame expeditions, revamps the endgame loot system, um, changes one of the endgame NPCs, Tiago, who used to have static garbage loot 
that did not rotate the way that you think that it should. Now you can actually manually rotate it. Um, removes timers from expeditions, which was a huge problem for a lot of people. Um, even though the timers were funny because of speed running, it just made it so everybody was just like full damage characters, just blow through it as fast as possible, which meant that having a tank and a support character and two DPS characters that also had support builds made no freaking sense because who would play any character as a tank or a support when the entire objective is to kill everything as fast as humanly possible. Um, so they've changed the entire meta of the end game, released a bunch of stuff for it, which people seem to be receiving pretty well. Um, so that's part of the news. Um, a funny thing before I get into the next half of it is that um, in releasing this update, they created a new bug that lasted for the last couple of days, which is by far one of the most amusing bugs I've ever seen a developer comment on. I saw a tweet from them that said, we are aware of a rare bug that makes your character act autonomously and interrupts your gameplay. They somehow added a bug where your character would just randomly do whatever it wanted to and take control of itself. So apparently... I got this. I got this. <laughs> People Can Fly has created Skynet. I was going to say... <laughs> so they take that as you will and they also announced a update that is um on the horizon um called zero dawn i gotta see, the, I gotta see these videos <laughs> um it's called world slayer um which is supposed to be coming sometime next year they alluded that it might be q2 q3 ish which would be cool um and like they've already said there's gonna be like a whole new like big bad and a bunch of new content and it's going to extend the game further beyond what the end game is right now um but it's also going to have a cost to it which people are pissed about but i mean wah, wah. it's a massive dlc i don't know but potentially massive dlc i figure by that point it'll be like one of those mobile games where you just open it and you click auto and if you put enough money into it the character will just play itself because they're already halfway there <laughs> <laughs> sweet but there you go Oh. Outriders, back at it again. I'll be playing it again, maybe oh a my week from now. God, are you gonna stream my, it? Oh yeah, and I'm gonna start back from the beginning all over again, so they can delete my character. <laughs> yes, do Repeat. it. Back from from the beginning to the end, just to get deleted again. Oh, all right. Uh, so there's a bug in Forza that'll allow you to like it's a a, a away from keyboard game or away from keyboard bug that. I don't know if it's necessarily a bug. It's it an allows exploit. you to rack up. Yeah, an exploit. That's a great one. It allows you to rack up a whole bunch of points. Um, what you gotta do is wait, 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 day drinker. Please read these instructions in your best day drinker voice. <clears throat> From the Kotaku article. Here's what you gotta do. Turn on. Full drive assist, including assisted braking, auto steering, traction control, and stability control. Is this, is this good? <laughs> uh, pick a car with great handling and braking that's too heavy to fly off the track, like the BMW X5 FE. Three. Select a Goliath racetrack. Select a Goliath racetrack from the Creative Hub trending section. Choose one with no AI derivatars and play it solo. Make sure you're using an Xbox One controller. Xbox Series X and S controllers have auto have, will automatically turn off after a while. A rubber band around the Xbox One controller to pull the trigger back so you are constantly accelerating grab yourself a cookie to wash away the shame <laughs> <laughs> is that okay <laughs> no that was amazing that was perfect we're gonna have to like release that as its own video i swear yeah so that is that is plagiarized literally from or I, I read that literally from the kotaka article which we could also post um but People have been using it. So the Goliath racetrack is the biggest racetrack. So you literally. So it's rum, like, a, rum, rum. like the first one I did is a 13 minute long race. 
Yeah. It it's serious. So you rack up some points. And mm-hmm. XP points are the most important points that I've seen so far. So I mean, I clearly suck. So <laughs> do not take my word for it. But um, we'll post the Goliath oh. or the Kotaku article unless they've already fixed it, which is totally possible. This exploit may be prevented in any update that you've automatically done. Mine automatically updated yesterday. So we'll see how that goes. Well, our last article, continuing the theme of exploits and continuing our theme of this not actually being short news. In <laughs> fact, we specifically left this one for the end because this is going to take a little bit to unpack because mm. this is flipping hilarious. So Battlefield 2042 released. And one of the cool things about Battle 42 is you can set up kind of your own server with your own rules. Uh, I forgot what exactly what they call it. Uh, it's, it's not server con- prime. Oh, no, no, server no, 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 it's, no, 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 it's not, not, not that it's not the farm okay. part. It's, it's, uh, okay. they, they call the custom game something like containment or I don't know something, but yeah. you create your own custom game. You have your custom rules and you can get quite wild with these custom rules. So a lot of people have been, and of course you can name it, whatever you want. A lot of people have been like creating these games and advertise, you know, putting their servers on the server browse list. And you see a whole bunch of stuff like AI bot farm, get tons of XP. And you're like, come here for you. Like first 18 players get lots of XP. This is kind of true. Um, and all these different names. And so a bunch of people join it. What they're doing is they're setting up a team game. It's on a particular map. It's a small map. And they give an extremely high amount of health and damage ability to one team and an extremely low amount of health and damage ability to the other team. And so they and their friends join quick. And the first ones that join all go to the first team. And then everybody else who joins after that goes to the other team and they turn off the swap team function. Oh, so all these people flood in trying to get free XP, not realizing that they are the ones being farmed for the XP, that they are the fodder that is coming in while these people that have all the guns and all the health and they're sitting up really high. They're just sitting down shooting them and <laughs> killing them as soon as they oh show my up. God. And you know what? Hey, guess what? A person oh. shows up and joins the server and maybe plays it like two or three times and tries to swap teams and hoping they get on the other team and they don't. And maybe they try it two or three more deaths and then they exit the server. But who cares? Because of the name of the server more people are just flooding in and they just keep flooding in as like this fodder that these other people are just killing and racking up tons of XP on. And it's hilarious. It is probably the funniest thing I've seen. And it's all within the rules that battlefield 2042 is set up for these custom servers that you can set up. Um, uh, I believe they call it portal actually, uh, cause you can free up more servers for portal. So, and because everybody's trying to get this free XP, more and more people join these servers. So it gets raised up in the ranking of the servers that are available in the server browser. So the whole top of the server browser is flooded with these bullshit. <laughs> I fucking love that joke. It oh is my just, God. and you have, you have near zero chance of ever killing one of these people. Uh-huh. And you, you, you might, you may actually spawn with a weapon, but a lot of times you don't even, you'll spawn with like a knife and everybody else has got guns. And they're just shooting you down. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, that's just good times. That's hilarious. It is just good times. It is. Yeah, like I can't hate on that. I'm sorry. That's genius. Like, yeah, and it's like it's totally within the rule set, and it. They, this is the like the first day it released. These started showing up. And they just created a rule set that was so easily exploited. And yeah, these people are farming XP. All right. <laughs> oh, if you play 2042, please let us know if you checked one of these out. I would love to hear your experience and how much fun it was getting killed over and over again. I, I mean, I'm sure it, it's it's frustrating thinking you're going in there for one thing and getting killed over and over again. But I'm sure that if at least you know what's going on and you join it for some hilarity for a couple of minutes, that you'll derive possibly some fun with that idiotic stuff going Word on. in the street is the game barely works anyways at this point. The so game does worry. barely work as it is. It's, a, it's already getting <sighs> into mass refund territory, and I don't think even I don't even think it's officially released on Steam yet. I saw a great meme the other day that showed Cyberpunk 2077 and said, worst release of all time, worst launch of all time. And then underneath of it was a picture of uh, Battlefield 2042 and it said, hold my beer. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's not even out yet on Steam. Four hours to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's already plagued it's, by negative press and people saying mass refund this game. Yeah, that's impressive. Crazy sauce. <laughs> so we don't have any email for this. Uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, we, excuse me, excuse me. No, I we don't have any music for the email section. Is what I meant oh, to say. Yeah. Like, I said wrong like, words. <laughs> so because Zycia isn't here, I'm going to play our official new email music that I picked oh out my myself. God, That's that. right. It's time for emails. If you want to email, just email us at GOA at sasgaming.com. That's GOA at sasgaming.com. Talk about anything that we've talked about. Talk about anything that's your life. Tell us about what you hate, whether it's in gamings or it's just in real life or whatever it is. Or just tell us about the city next to your city that sucks. Uh, you know, Springville, Springfield versus what's the other city? Boy, I forgot. Uh, anyway. Uh, I won't say Next Bakersfield, podcast. but that's not what it is. So, it. Bruno, tell us about the email that came in. So, uh, the email came in from, do we, are, are we allowed to say this person's name? Michael? The is name is at the end. It says cheers. Yeah. It says cheers. It, and then, it, it, yeah, I, yeah, okay. it's, yeah, friend of the can. podcast. Yeah, okay. Friend of the okay. podcast. Yeah, of the podcast peanut butter mongoose sent in this email. Uh, so I just asked because, you know. Mike seems to be a little bit secretive sometimes. So. It's not. It's not their if real they name. Put, so if they fine. put a signature on the end, I say that we can always use the signature on the cool. end. We don't use their email right, address. We're gonna roll with it. We use um, how they sign it. I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm cutting off a piece of the email only because I can't. I can't say it. I, I just. I can't. I can't say it for multiple reasons. But I want you to know that we all read it. <laughs> yes. We all loved it. Uh, it was amazing. And it. the it reason had... I mention it is because I almost want to torture everybody else with the fact that they didn't see the greatness that was the second paragraph of this email. So yeah, yeah. We'll stick <laughs> to the first paragraph for <laughs> reasons. <laughs> um we will find a way to everybody's in suspense. Don't don't do any promises without that... We're not going to do okay. any promises. I just wanted to torture them. Listen, right. I'm yes. reading the email. If I want to torture people, I'm going to do it. All right. Deal with it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's why I played the Southern rock song. There we go. Um, so the, the email is team Sass. I have a question for y'all. I'm looking at getting an Oculus quest Two VR system, but I wasn't sure if you exclusively purchase games through their store, or if there is a way to make use of other media you already have through another system, like a PlayStation or switch. Any clarification? would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I'm going to give you good news and bad news simultaneously on this. You can play games that are not quest purchased, but right. Vive store games only 
off of the PC. There is a mm -hmm. application that I believe is called Oculus Link um, that allows you to play games that you have purchased on platforms within the PC um, mm -hmm. and play them directly on your Oculus. Your question specifically mentioned PlayStation and um, the Switch. Uh, not allowed. I don't even know if the Switch does anything VR related, really. And I know for a fact that PSVR, um, although their catalog exists on other systems, uh, it will be a cold day in hell before Sony allows anybody to play anything licensed on their machine on anything else other than PSVR's headset. Yeah. Some things I want to add here. First of all, um, the next generation is probably not that far away and is probably going to have significant improvements. I would wait till the next generation. Um, and I mean, not far away. I mean, a year and a half or two years. If this, <laughs> let, well, let me, let me ask you if this was like, um, like somehow related to like a Christmas gift, would that be your suggestion as well? Uh, okay. Yeah. If, if you're talking about Christmas, um, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the newest headsets. Uh, the Quest I, 2. I have both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Quest 2. And considering the price point for the Quest 2 and what you get out of it, if you are in a position where purchasing the Quest for $300 is not a large financial impact to you, and it is to be used for your family, kids, et cetera, yourself, whatever it may be as a Christmas gift, or even just in general for $300 for what you get for two years worth. If that is when the next big release comes or even a year, yeah. I feel like it's very, very much worth it. Cause when you think about it, a subscription to most gaming subscriptions nowadays is going to be like 10 to $15 a month. So when you add that all up after a year and a half, to two years, you're already at point. that price point anyways. I'm um, granted you have to buy the games, but some of those games give you a lot of replayability. Like Beat Saber is a game that oh, Beat Saber is amazing. You could play for hundreds of hours. Rec Room, um, which is free, I think still, if I'm not mistaken, it's either free or it has a pretty low cost. Another game that has a ton of replayability. Um, now, so there's just what's, a lot. To uh, it. Uh, what was? Is it? What's the one that you don't need a computer to play on? That's the Oculus Quest 2. Okay, yes. Okay, so I've heard good things about it where you don't need a computer to play on it for a, a fair amount of games, but it does have the capability to plug into your computer and even yep. play possibly more demanding games on your computer with the Oculus Quest. So I have heard good things about it. I've seen it live in action. I haven't, I didn't put it on, but I saw somebody playing it live action. They were playing, um, uh, I expect you to die too, yep. or, which is coming out. Uh, that's a, that, that is a personal recommendation. The, the I expect you die franchise because, um, you're sitting down and all of your movement you do is it, it's, it's not moving things around you. You're moving your head and looking around. So that's kind of cool. Uh, you, it's kind of an escape room type thing, but yep. like bondish themed. Um, so yeah, the, the Oculus quest two is probably a good one. Uh, the Vive is excellent. Um, but with the beacons um, is a setup. I'm challenge. going to once again, as somebody who owns both re-suggest the Oculus quest two yeah. as your starter into VR, the other headsets are all more expensive for mm -hmm. marginally like marginal improvements on graphics. It, it's just not. It's not worth it right. unless you're like a VR enthusiast. Oculus Quest 2 is amazing for the price. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things is I believe Facebook did stand by what they said they were going to do. It no longer has the requirement to log into a Facebook account, which was one of the big things oh, that people oh. didn't want to do because it tracks right. a bunch of your data. That it has a now. brand new meta account. <laughs> it's it's also really great for if you have small play, like small spaces um, because it has a functionality where Unlike the other ones where you just kind of see the outline you created, if you get too close to something, um, it has a function where it will show you, like it'll turn on the camera and it will show uh, you that you're getting too close to something. Uh, that's cool. As opposed to just giving you an outline. So there's you're a gonna lot of knock down all of your Legos. And that's thing. yeah, that's okay. bad. Like okay. no, it's right there. You yeah. can see it. You can yeah. see the Millennium Falcon <laughs> all lit up. 
Um, Beautiful. I, I think the other thing to mention with this too is uh, PlayStation. Uh, the PlayStation VR for the PlayStation 4 uh, was pretty decent. I've used it. Uh, it's, it's, it's fairly good. It's got one of the better headsets in, in, I'm not talking about the screen. There's better screens out there. I'm talking about the fit and finish and the ease of put, taking it on and off and it's comfortable. Um, and if you have an older PlayStation, that's good. It does have the freaking balls on stick thing, which is not as good. And it's certainly bad. I don't think that's appropriate to talk about on a podcast. I mean, balls and stick. We're all about that. And then when you turn around and the camera can't see them, it can really mess stuff up. Um, now, apparently the PlayStation VR 2 is going to take care of a lot of those problems, but it's also not out yet. So that's one of those things that, A, if you're looking for this holiday season, that's not an option. And B, even if you are looking for late later in the future, that's only going to be on the PlayStation 5. So if you don't have a PlayStation 5, you're not going to be able to use that PlayStation VR 2. And the other negative there, I, I still think you know, if you got a PlayStation, it might be the way to go. But the other negative is that it will not be backwards compatible to the older PlayStation VR games. Um, <laughs> like the... Darn it, I forgot the name of the mouse game, the one with the mouse that you interact with, which is a really good game. Um, I actually technically own it, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but yeah, there, there are a couple of negatives there, but if a PlayStation is what you have, I mean, you might be able to pick up PlayStation VR for your PS4 for pretty cheap. Moss? Moss, yes, yes. I hear is a fantastic game. I've seen it played. It's really cool. I have not touched it myself, but... Um, so yeah, there you go. Bruno, who has both says Oculus Quest 2 VR system is a great way to get started for a reasonable price. And if you got PlayStation, check out the PlayStation options and see what might be best for you. Uh, oh, and, and yes, Bruno Switch actually did have a VR option. They had their cardboard VR. Oh, well, that's not <laughs> exactly. It's just as good as it sounds. Uh, I believe that was when you could look up the Kuokula of a uh, turkey. <laughs> right in time for Thanksgiving. Stop. I'm serious. You could do that. And that's not a fun thing, I'm sure. Uh, no. <sighs> <sighs> okay. On that happy note, we're wrapping up tonight. Thank you, everyone, for your... Just for your patronage. Uh, if you truly want to show your support and your patronage, we do have a Patreon that you can show up in the credits at the end. Uh, we have a couple people already that show up there. And you can find that at patreon.com slash sasgaming. Uh, as well, even if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You know, throw us a like. Throw us a dislike if you didn't like something about today's video or one of the other videos we do. Subscribe to us on YouTube. All of these small things add up and help and help spread the word of the podcast so that we can continue to you know, bring this questionable entertainment to you. <laughs> so with that I'm... said, go ahead. Uh, I think what Brian's, Brian's trying to say is thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> as Zeiss, you would say, stay safe. As I would say, be nice to one each other, uh, one another. Sorry. And we will see you next week. Or and no, next no, week, no. by the way, since it is going to be Turkey Day next week, we're not going to have our podcast on Thursday. The podcast is actually going to happen on Tuesday, 11 23, 2021. Until then, you guys have a good day. Thank you.